I'm gonna go ahead and start with Chicago Fire because I didn't come up with the idea to do the reviews until after Chicago Fire already had its premiere, uh, season 2 premiere, uh, so I didn't write anything down from the episode, so I'm going to try and remember. But Glee, Grey's Anatomy, I have the um, season premiere notes all in here, so that would be easy to remember everything that I wanted to say. So we're going to fumble through Chicago Fire together. So Chicago Fire season 2 episode 1 was called A Problem House, and basically what happens is, um, well the, the big aspect of it, uh, Chief Bowden gets called to headquarters and he's told that um, they need to cut back on some things and to save money, um, so one of the things that they have to do is close firehouses down, and uh, I don't remember her name, oh, the, the chick. I don't remember her name. If you guys remember what I'm talking about, please put it in the comments so I know what her name is. I don't remember her name. She was in this one episode. Um, she she tells Chief Bowden that uh, his firehouse is on the list uh, of houses that need to be closed down because there's been some problems over there. Um, uh, medicine went missing off the ambulance because last season uh, Kelly with uh, his shoulder or his arm or whatever it was um, and the sexual harassment claim because Tara was like yeah the whole Tara thing um, and there's been, oh, there's been a lot of stuff going on um, so one of the houses that has already been closed down they get a couple people that join uh, I'm pretty sure it's Firehouse 51 I could be wrong. I think it's 51. Um, 33 gets closed and they, they come over to 51 which is the firehouse of well, the Lemmy characters. Um, and there's new guy. don't remember his name. Um, he gets placed uh, uh, in a position on squad and that upsets uh, Mills because he, he wanted to be on squad and he didn't make it. Um, so they're kind of not seeing eye to eye right now. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some problems later. Um, and the lady, <laughs> whose name I don't remember, um, she calls in the guy whose name I can't remember, the guy that gets put in the squad, and she tells him to, she wants him to be her eyes and ears at the firehouse to make sure that nothing goes wrong. I don't like her at all. She's very shady. Um, so that's that aspect of the episode. Another aspect, um, Kelly has an arsonist after him. Uh, they were, uh, they got a call, uh, about an apartment building that was on fire. I think it was an apartment building. Um, and they saw his badge number, Kelly's badge number, on the side of the wall. Um, they thought that was just a coincidence, but then... His car caught on fire and blew up, um, and the new guy that moved in from Firehouse 33, I gotta remember his name, I'm sure he's gonna be important. Um, both at uh, the apartment building and in Severin's car, uh, he found this metal coil that holds um, some kind of brake fluid, I guess, that ignites and causes an explosion. He, he keeps finding them every time a fire happens. and they're pretty sure that there's an arsonist attached to Kelly, and they don't know who it is, and it's just, uh, and who would want to go after him, because he's so great and perfect. Um, what else? Shay, um, and, and Severide are not, no, I don't say they're not talking, but, um, they're having issues because she doesn't believe that Renee's baby is his, because the due date's all messed up, and she's too far along for it to be his baby and she's just not sure and blah 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 um so there's that oh okay uh, another part of the episode um the game days bar that is across the street from molly's which is uh herman herman's otis's and dawson's bar um 
everyone's going there uh, and they're not getting, and Molly's isn't getting any customers and they're worried. So um, they send Cruz over to find out what's going on, be like a secret shopper type thing. Uh, and he tells them, he's like, oh, it's not a big deal tomorrow, no one's going to care, and it's not going to be a big deal. Um, and they find out that he actually lied to them because it's actually the greatest place in the world. Um, so they had a big fight and whatever. Oh, and during that big fight, um, oh my god, there was so much stuff that happened. I'm remembering things as I'm saying this. Um, oh, what's his name? Oh, man. <sighs> Some guy is running for union president and everyone's mad because nobody likes him. I wish I knew these names. I'm usually so good about names. Um, he's running for union president. Nobody likes him. Everyone's mad because he's going to just, you know, cause all kinds of trouble. Um, and... Oh, more names. Mouch's girlfriend that he met online that came down... Japanese girl. I don't know her name. I'm gonna do better with my Chicago Fire reviews in the future, I promise. Um, she goes back home and and she tells him when she's leaving, uh, she says, in my country men with narrow eyes are destined to do great things. And she says, you are destined to do great things. And that's when he's thinking, I need to do something other than be a fighter fighter, I guess. So, Mouch is now running for union president. Whoop. Um, gosh, I, I'm trying to remember everything that's happening. Oh, wow, this was an hour long show? Okay. I remember I forgot something that I was going to say and I jumped over. Oh, there was a scene in Molly's bar where we met Detective Holstead, who is going to be a uh, main character in Chicago PD. I'm super excited. Uh, Jesse Lee Sofer plays him. Uh, we don't know his name yet. I wish I knew his first name. Um, he had a little cameo appearance. Um, he had a couple lines. He was talking with uh, Dawson, which was super cool. I was very, very excited to see him. I wish that we would have been able to see the other cops that are going to be on the show. I, mean, I think we'll see them later on in the season, but uh, it was super cool getting to see his character. On Chicago Fire and I need to see more of him because he had five lines in the whole episode that was really depressing um, so that that was cool um, and that was the thing I was gonna say that I completely forgot about oh, man this is where we edit stuff out um, okay uh, the episode um, I guess took place it was the one year anniversary of when Andy died. Um, so they were, uh, mostly they were celebrating our morning, but they talked about that quite a bit. And um, Casey went to go see Heather. That's her name. That's her name. Her name's Heather. Uh, Andy's wife, uh, before he died, obviously. Um, and they're, they're talking and she tells him she's going to go to happy hour with some of her friends and he goes down there to see her and at the very end of the episode they get a call um, about a car accident and he gets there and it turns out that Heather was the driver and all of her friends were there in the car with her and she possibly killed one of them I guess because in the next episode they said she's facing a manslaughter charge. That was really like... I kind of had a feeling it was going to happen. I don't know. I don't know where that storyline's going to go cuz in the in the promo she's like asking if if Casey will watch Griffin and Ben her kids. Um I I'm, I'm not sure where that's going to go really. Um I really wish that I had written stuff down for that because I would have had opinions on some of the stuff that happened and I don't really have I mean, this is kind of a bust, I guess. So that's, I guess that's the review for uh, Chicago Fire 201. Uh, I wish I had something better, but I promise next week I'll have opinions and I'll have certain scenes that's, you know, jumped out at me and stuff like that. But sorry that I couldn't give you more, but that's the review, uh, and I guess I'll
guys. I'll see you next week.